In this module, we are going to talk about some uh, new concepts for object-oriented programming. Specifically, we're going to talk about um, the static, class, and instance methods and uh, attributes in a uh, class. So let's get started with that. we have three additional types of attributes or methods that we're going to talk about. The first is called a static method and a static method is a concept um, where that method or attribute has no dependency on the class or instance um, variable, the state of that class. Um, if it's static it really doesn't matter. Um, what the status of that class or that instance is. If we have a class method or um, attribute, then the the uh, method or attribute is dependent upon the state of the class itself. Not necessarily the instance of it, the object, but the actual class that's there. And then finally, an instance variable is dependent upon the state of the instance or the actual object of that class. So when you create a class um, in object-oriented programming, a instance method or attribute is dependent upon um, that. Um, instance, uh, so objects um, or instances of a class uh, can have access to class attributes and methods as well as static attributes and methods. Um, but static attributes and methods don't have access to instances, uh, instance variables or attributes and, and methods. Um, and so that's that's kind of the, the big differences there. Um, and so we're going to explore those different types here in uh, today and talk about how to create these static and class and instance uh, variables within Python. So let's switch over to our uh, Visual Studio and get started with how to do that. So we already know that we can create classes within Python by using the class operator and then setting the name of that. So I'm just going to call this my class right here. And we're familiar with uh, the initialization uh, method within there. And this is where we can create our our variables within there. So uh, we can just say var1 is equal to 1 and self.var2 is equal to 2, like this. All right? And creating an instance of this class is fairly simple. Where we can just do like this and we can play around with our variables like that, including setting them and, and getting them and, and those types of things. So, but what's really interesting is this is actually um, an instance uh, method, right? And these are instance uh, attributes. In there. So let's talk a little bit about first static methods. So I'm going to change this class to be something like this um, and create a static uh, method that's in there. Now one of the things that's interesting about Python is there really is no concept of a static um, attribute. Um, in other uh, object-oriented programming classes there are concepts of uh, static uh, attributes or properties that you may hear. But in this case, Python doesn't really have that. So we're just going to talk about static methods um, for this for this uh, for this moment. And you create a static method by using the decorator, um, the static method. So you do at static method, and then you define the function that you want to do. So let's just say simple hello. And we're going to print out 
hello world. Like this. Now a decorator, which is what this is right here, you don't need to know too much about it, but basically what it does is it is a special function that alters the functionality of another function. So it is going to take this function, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's a function itself that will take this method and alter it to be a static method. And that's really all you need to know is that, that that's how that works. So moving on, let's create another static method just for fun with an input. So we're gonna do a print file like this. Like that. And now let's start working with our class. So let's create our class. So, oh, and the actually the interesting thing is we don't actually have to create an instance of this class. So we can do this and say hello without actually even creating the class. We're accessing this that's in there. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new terminal. <clears throat> And we are going to do this, python scratchpad.py. And we can see that it prints out hello world because this is calling that static method. But what's interesting is we can actually call that same static method on instances as well. So I am going to method call object and show you method call after creating object run this again we can see yep we called the method after uh, doing this and then we created I uh, called the method after creating it in there and same thing, um, we can also do our print val and pass in a value. Um, and we can see that we passed in that value and it got printed out like that. So that's what a static class is, is it's it's almost like a function. And you could almost say that, well, what's what's the difference, right? What's, what's going on here? Um, and, and why don't we just use this? Well, sometimes in, in a, a situation, you may want to have static calls to a class that's associated with that. So it makes kind of like logical sense. Um, so for, for example, you might say just um, uh, something that's kind of associated with, with that type of, of a class, uh, going back to like an animal class. So let's say, uh, you know, all animal classes, they're always gonna say, um, uh, they're always uh, <clears throat> gonna say, you know, hello or something like that. Um, and so you always you want to have that associated um, with it and it doesn't matter you know what type of animal it is or if it's a subclass or anything you just you want this say hello type of thing to be a part of all of those classes and then be able to have access to that um, and then that way when you import this um, this uh, object you you'd only have to import the class and not a class and also um, a function that did the same thing twice as that so for example let's let's show how that would work so let's drop into our python console and if i wanted to um import this file i could say from scratch pad import and now i can do my class like this right and because we're printing out some stuff and doing some stuff here uh that's being printed out there but um, I can say my class dot uh, say hello like that. Now, uh, let's say, yeah, you wanted to have your own function. Well, now I would have to do from scratch pad 
import my class and say hello. And now we've had to, to import multiple things and I've got this say hello. It all really kind of depends on the specific situation that you're enduring in, but it's, it's meant to be a way for us to be able to organize our code in such a way um, that makes kind of logical sense. So if it makes sense to split away, split away the function from the class, then go ahead and do that. But this is also a way that you kind of include it in the class, but it doesn't necessarily have to have a specific state that's in there. Okay, moving on, let's talk about class methods. So similar to, um, similar to how we create a, a, uh, a static method, we're going to use a decorator as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a cat class like this. And we're going to say that the number of legs on a cat is always four. And this is a class property. And what makes it so special is that it's a class property is you're defining it um, outside of the init um, or, or object uh, methods uh, or instance methods. And I'll explain a little bit what that is a little bit more. So let's um, call another class method, another decorator called class method. And this makes it a class and we're going to say def knocks off and we're going to pass in the class object and then the item and then we're going to say this the cat with legs has knocked off the So let's look at this a little bit further. We can look at this and see that this is a, a class uh, class uh, variable, or, or sorry, a class uh, property. <clears throat> and then this is actually a class method that's in there. So what does that mean? Well, we can do again, class.numlegs, we can print that out. And we can also call this, um, and say cat dot knocks off. And we're gonna say the water. The water bottle. Boom. So let's go ahead and drop into our terminal again, run our scratch pad, and we can see that yes, we're able to access this without even creating an instance of it. So what's the difference between a class method and a static method? Well, it is dependent upon the state and you can see that with this function that's right here. So you have the knocks off function, we're passing in the class. Um, this will always be passed in to us from Python and it is always the first. It's very similar to self, but it is the class itself and not an instance. So remember, that's why we're using class instead of self. Um, to remind us that this is a class um, variable and not the uh, self variable that's in there and then uh, the item and you can see we're accessing the class property that's there and that's how we can kind of do that and access that so that's what a class method is is, is it you you have a little bit of state and you're able to kind of mess around with that so now let's talk a little bit about instance variables and methods. Um, so continuing on with our cat class here, let's add our dunder init. And we are going to give it a name. And this is an instance property. And then finally,
So here we have a an instance method, um, which is literally the init. Uh, you'll remember that from our original uh, object-oriented programming. And then this is also a instance method and it talks and this is uh, doing that. So the difference here is is self. Now remember we are self-assigning, we're self-assigning, <laughs> uh, self-assigning uh, this variable to self. Um, and the reason why we're doing that is because um, we're using this to distinguish that this is a instance method versus this as a class method so that we can be able to do that. Now we are still accessing this class property right here. And we're, we're able to kind of see that in there. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Um, we can show that we can do cat dot uh, knocks off, right? And we're gonna pass in the water bottle again. But to show you that this won't work, as well, is we're going to get an error right here. And I want you to think about what kind of error would we get here? What is going on with this? And why wouldn't this work? So let's run this and see what happens and do that. But as a, as a thought process, maybe pause the video and think about what kind of error would you expect this to be? And then unpause this and we'll see what this execution is like. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we can see this is missing a required positional argument that's in there, self. So that's interesting. What's happening there? Well, what's happening is it's expecting this to be an instance, right? And so when Python uh, sees a instance method, it will pass in that self value. Now, it doesn't pass it in because we haven't declared it or we haven't defined the class that's in there. And so we have to define a class in order for this to work that's in there. Now we can see that this knocked off still worked um, above here and then we got this trace back. So let's go ahead and do this where we'll do my cat is equal to cat Lucy, and then I'm gonna say my cat dot speak. And then I'm also gonna do my cat dot knocks off, and she's gonna knock off my milk cup. Go ahead and run that see how that works all right so we can see my cat with nine legs so that's uh, this one right here sorry with four legs um, has knocked off the water bottle from the table and then meow my name is Lucy and I have four legs and then we also knocked off um, with Lucy saying that Lucy has the cat has knocked off the milk from the table so that's that is the basic overview of those a few um, types of of uh, of things. Now let's talk a little bit about kind of more of the scope of of things and how they kind of interact um, with them. So we've got our cat class here, and let's continue further um, with this. And I'm going to call Larry is going to equal to a cat named Larry. I'm going to call Mo, who's going to be equal to a cat called Mo. And then I want to print out uh, Larry's name and Mo's name. This shouldn't be really too exciting to you. You should be able to see that we've got a Larry and a Mo. And I'm going to say this. Let's do this. Larry. Just 
make this a little bit cleaner while we finish up. Okay, run this one more time, make sure that everything's working. Cool, so we can see that that's working there. All right, so now let's see what happens. We're just gonna say, we're gonna print out their names. And these, remember, are instance properties. Okay, so now let's print their number of legs. And remember, these are class properties, okay? So, bear with me here. run this and see how that works. They should both be four, and that's exactly what we would expect it to be. Okay, neat. All right, so nothing really too exciting. Let's see now what happens when we change that. Hmm, what happens if we change num legs of cat? What's uh, what's going to happen to Larry and Mo? So take some time and think about this. And maybe even pause the video for a minute while I, or, or think about this while I code this up and think what's going to happen when we do this. So num legs is equal to three. And what is going to happen to Larry's and Mo's legs? Let's see what happens here. Actually, just copy this guy. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh no, Larry and Mo had her leg chopped off. Originally it was four, and now we've chopped off one of them. How dare we do that? How terrible of a people are we? Well, as you can see, a class property affects other instances of that class. So not only is it affecting the class itself um, and anything when you access that class, but it also affects any instances of those class. And, and that's kind of by design. It's meant to be like that. It's a more of a global type of, of change. All right, so let's now fix Mo but not Larry. And what's gonna happen here? What do I mean by this? So we're gonna do mo.numlegs is equal to four, right? And we're gonna print these same things here. All right, so Mo, his legs got fixed, but Larry's still isn't the same. But let's say we do this, cat.numlegs is equal to five. Let's give everybody back, you know, two more legs that they lost. What is that going to do? Take a moment here, actually, and think about this, ponder. What is gonna happen? I've set now cat to five, the cat number legs to five, and I up here set Mo's number of legs to four. Is Mo's number of legs going to be five or is it going to be four? Let's see what happens. It's going to be four. And you can see, wait, what? What has that happened? So what happened here is by altering Mo's number of legs in there, we've now changed effectively. We have changed Mo's 
numb legs from a class uh, attribute to a instance attribute. And so therefore, no longer are we dealing with a class attribute that's changed in there. And so those are some kind of gotchas that you've got to figure out um, and understand when dealing with, with that. So in summary, we have learned about static, class, and instance uh, methods and um, attributes. Static uh, methods in Python are declared using decorator, and they have a scope across both class, uh, class and um, instance variables, but they have no reliance on the state, meaning um, they they don't really um, they don't they can't work with uh, the state of an instance or a class variable. Um, a class method is uh, something that can be accessed from both the class without creating an instance and an instance. Um, and class properties are also global to all that. And then instance methods and variables um, are very similar, but their scope of them is for the specific object. So you're, you're moving your scope down basically as you continue um, in from a static to a class to an instance. Now, when you use a instance um, method and you make a change to a class attribute, you've now converted that class attribute to a instance attribute for just that object, as we talked about and showed with Mo's num flakes there. And so that's how, that's kind of a basic overview of static and class and instance uh, variables.